physical therapist herself. Following the earthquake of 2010, she and her family traveled to Haiti to provide medical aid to the many injured and disabled. What started out as a single trip ended up becoming a lifelong passion as she has continued to travel back and forth to Haiti ever since. Wow, that is, um, you know, it's one of those stories where you hear somebody does that and it's just what on earth inspired you to decide to go to Haiti? You know, it was kind of like a crazy thing. I don't know if you remember back when the earthquake happened, but it- I do. It was, yeah, and it was just on the news, you know, hundreds of thousands of people um, died. And there was this moment when I was watching CNN and there were these two therapists and they just like, they were like jumping out of the TV and they just said, there's just, look at us. There's two of us here and there's just thousands of people that need help. And it, and they just like, it, it was like they leaped through the TV and they were like, if you're a physical therapist, just come. And wow. I hadn't really done anything. I don't know. I just decided to go. It was crazy, you know. But I <laughs> what did you learn from that? And what, I mean, what did you learn from taking that leap yourself? What that kind of inspired, you know, somebody on CNN in a foreign country saying, come help. And you're like, okay, not, not many people answer that call. You know what? I just learned so much. It was just, it's just like, for me, it was so life giving because it, you know physical therapy helps people every day but this was mm -hmm. like I don't know it was just to a whole new level and for me it kind of felt like everything I had ever learned it just sort of came together and it was like I could use all of my skills not just my physical therapy skills but like problem solving skills and you know you just name it it's just like it, it the Haiti is really different than the United States. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but it was a disaster. It was like, you know, it was like, you know, raw. And, and you know, you, you, you had to like everything, there were barriers everywhere. So you right. like, you had to just come up with solutions, you know, to solve the problems. And so it, it, it kind of gives you that opportunity to really dig deep and say like, to not really think, you know, sometimes you just, you dig deep and you go, okay, I just got to do this. So, you know, yeah. find a way. And because you're not like second guessing yourself so much, I think sometimes you can make better decisions because you just like, okay, I got to do this. That's really um, interesting. And the infrastructure is so nothing that you really are dealing and, and particularly post disaster. Yeah. You really are dealing with the bare bones, no pun intended there. Um, and having to just creatively come up with all of these resources, solutions, organizing people. Um, was there a language barrier? Did you did you speak the language or no? <laughs> wow. They speak Creole, which I guess yeah. if, I had, if I had spoke a little French, you know, now I can speak. I'm pretty good with Creole, but you know, if I had spoke a little French, it probably would have been helpful. Um, but somehow, you know, even in the hospital, you would just write whatever language you spoke. So the, maybe the last doctor wrote in Spanish and, you know, some wow. of Russian and I don't know, like, but they had, you know, here, there would just be like these volunteer translators who would kind of follow you along and, you know, you, where there was a will, there was a way. Yeah. It's wild what happens, you know, the, the people who are brought together in those situations, how many other people answered the call to be a physical therapist when you were down there? Not, well, there, there were others. You're like definitely. two. <laughs> You're like, not many, actually. It was, I don't know where I was in the general hospital. I don't know. It was just me. <laughs> You're like, well, actually. I did. I did. There one. were other, there were so many, you know what it was? There were so many people that were injured that there were other locations. Like there was a whole setup at the hospital and there were at least two other therapists there. And, you know, through the years I've met, like a lot of the therapists that I meet that go to Haiti, that that's how they started, you know, they wow. started during the earthquake. Yeah. And then what was it like to come back um, after that experience? How long were you down there? And then what, how did it change your perception of your life back home? Well, we stayed for eight weeks. So we wow. really made a, you know, we committed for four. 
But while I was down there in the, in the general hospital, which was just a series of tents, there was a particular young lady who had uh, double amputation. Like a lot of people had maybe lost an arm or a leg or they had, you know, rods in their legs, but she lost both her legs. And uh. I know it's crazy. And when she was going home, my husband and I were like, oh, you know, we'll, we'll wheel you home. And, you know, even though I saw there are 10 cities everywhere, you know, like the, right. whole, the whole city is basically flattened. I knew that there were 10 cities, but I didn't actually personally know someone that was going to live in one. So like when right. we left her home, I wheeled her to the front of a church and it was a box, like a, right. like a physical, you know, box with just tents and people. And it, that was when, you know, all of a sudden it's that moment when things stop, you know, like people talked about, you have that moment when it goes quiet mm -hmm. and for me, it, like you're, I was so busy doing that I didn't really think about like, well, what happens afterwards? So mm. it, all of a sudden it just hit me. Like, and I just started crying. Like, and I had a nurse, she was Haitian and she was yelling at me to stop crying, you know, be strong. And I was like, <laughs> I was just looking at this poor young woman and I'm like, I, I just remember saying to her, she couldn't understand anything I was saying, but I'm like, I'm going to do something. I'm going to help you. I don't know what I'm going to do, but oh my, I, it was that reality of like, is this really where you're going to live? You know, and then she turned out she had an 11 month old baby that was wow. seven pounds. And so for me, I was like, oh my goodness, you know, so that's kind of what started it. And so I called, I am not like, I hardly know who my legislators are, like I'm not politically <laughs> involved, but I like, we had free phone service. All the phone companies gave us free phone service. So, oh, that's nice. Yeah. So I picked up the phone and I called, you know, my local, I guess, assemblyman. And I just was like, I need to get someone out of Haiti. Like I, I need, this woman needs help. She needs surgery. Like she's going to die here. Like, what do I need to do? And they just walked me through it. So my life changed a lot because I ended up staying another four weeks because it took a time to get the papers. You know, I had to get medical visas and right. all that kind of stuff that you have to get, find her birth certificate, you know, crazy things. But, you know, I went to Haiti an empty nester. Oh, wow. <laughs> I came back from Haiti with a mom and a 11 and a half month old. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, you know, it, it, you know, it's kind of a story of it takes a village, but I, they are our second family. Like we always joke, you know, my husband and I, my husband was with me. I did bring him with me because I was, I was really nervous about going. So he came down with me. He was the big problem solver kind of person. He's like the, the rock kind of guy that just is stable. And I don't know, he doesn't get as kerfunkled as I do. But um, so we always joke that, you know, when we said when we did like our Christmas pictures, you know, you do photo pictures every year. <laughs> our our photo pictures when we came back, this was like our second family without actually having to get divorced. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, my life is very different. They they still live with me and this young woman walks and she works and she speaks English and she went to school and the little boy is He's 11. Actually, it's going to be 12 in May. So wow, they are. They took over my son and daughter's room because they had like you know moved out of the house, and I was like, oh, it's perfect. You know, room for you. And so yeah, life is a little different. <laughs> and are you still going back down to Haiti and doing work there? Yeah, yeah. I, you wow. know, I continued. We. I first went down. I never really thought that much that I would continue to go, but I went down originally to like basically tell her, show her family. Cause, you know, they were pretty trusting to just let her get on an airplane with us. Right. Uh, so I went down, <laughs> I went down at the end of 2010 to basically, I took, it was back in the day, you know, we didn't even have like, you know, the phones that have movies. So I brought like a DVD player and we made a DVD of her, you know, like showing that like for real, she's alive and she's healthy and she's thriving and um, we just, you know, so I've continued to go down there. And, and the big thing was that they really, physical therapy, I mean, so many people, 300,000 people, you know, more people had, you know, became severely disabled on top of the, you know, people that were already disabled with so few therapists that the need for physical therapy can make such a difference. Like it, 
it, it just can, in a child's life, in an adult's life, in anybody's life, it, it helps people like do, like everything that you guys have been talking about. It's like, we want people to be able to do what they love and be creative. Right. They need their bodies, you know? Right, so right. That's been, my whole mission has just been not single-handedly at all, but supporting basically the efforts to, you know, grow physical therapy in Haiti and help educate people to become physical therapists and support like the, the, the society there is very young of Haitian physical therapists to support all of their efforts in physical therapy and, and basically making physical therapy available for everybody in Haiti the way that it is in the United States. Right. This is something I've been thinking a lot about, you know, as we were talking about creativity and just, um, I love the diversity of the people that we're talking to and what they do, because you can't really be focused on, you know, what your greatest dreams are. If you're not eating enough, if you're not, if you don't have those basic needs met, or like you said, your body isn't working um, or, or you're limited in that capacity. And, and so finding creative solutions to helping at that very basic level seems like such a priority because there are still so many people who need this, you know, they, they, they need, uh, I have a doctor who goes over and does like hand surgery oh. for kids in Zimbabwe. And it's like, just blows my mind, you know, just, I'm like, you fix people's hands. <laughs> But it makes, like I, you know what, it makes such a difference and the people are so appreciative and you know what, they might not have a lot of material things, but they have spirit. They have, mm -hmm. you know, like that when you go there, I, I get more from them than I give. Like you, it's just, I, I don't know how to explain it, but you, when you're there, you see the, the, the community of people yeah. and how they are and they support one another and it makes you really like it's great because it I don't know you can I always bring those things back you know you bring yeah. that, that feeling back and that you know that ability to just go like yeah that's what's important in life we had an interesting discussion in South Africa with a guy who was talking about how he went at, or he had a friend go to South Africa at first and they were like, how do you live here? You're so poor. And the South African was like, what do you mean poor? You know what? We have everything we need. We have a roof over our head. It's, it's like a very judgmental, you know, it, you have to define what that word means. And they're rich in so many other things. It's very judgmental to assume like they're, <laughs> like you said, there's lots there's lots that we could learn and community seems to be like a, a massive one and this kind of breakdown. Mm -hmm. That it, it's so, it's so true. And they, and it's that, it's that untangible thing that you can't find here. Like that's mm. what, like a lot of times I just want to go back. It's like, you know, because it's so life, it's so life giving to mm. just be in that kind of environment where people they, they enjoy themselves. They, they, it, they, you don't have to have, you know, money and material things. And it helps you, sobers you a little bit as to like, well, what's, what's really important in life, mm, you know? I love that. And yeah. what inspires you creatively and, or who, who or what? Well, I, I would say that the Haitian people for sure, you know, like every time I go there, it's like, I just come back. It's like, it, there's always a story. Like one time we had a, um, we are, are, we had a flat tire and it was raining and, you know, we couldn't get the tire changed. And this is how they helped. They didn't just change the tire. There wasn't a tire. They didn't have any way to change the tire. <laughs> they took a tire from the car. They put it on our car and they're like, just come back tomorrow after you fix the tire. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm like, <laughs> I know. like we don't even know these people. And, and the, the doctor that I was with, he goes, no, no, it's fine. We'll, we'll bring it back tomorrow. And I'm like, yeah you know so i they that just to me it inspires me to be a better person you know like when i see how good and kind the people are there and they share everything you know if yeah. they have half a piece of bread they they cut it in 10 pieces if there's 10 people and it reminds me like one of the other guys that was uh what was his name uh, ensign you know like it, it just it just reminds you to it helps you to be a better person for sure yeah and, 
I love that. I love the work you're doing. I would love to hear more about it. And um, are you giving any presentations later in the week people can check out? We are. They should. You know what? So I'm on, we're on Friday at three o'clock. I actually am going to have a young gentleman who is going to share how, what does it really take to, be, you know, to get educated and to become a physical therapist? And it, it's, it's going to be, it's really good to like see it from his side. So we, he's, he's in Haiti. So. Oh, it's cool. Like a, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's Haitian. So it's, it's great. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And I look forward to hearing more about all the things you're doing. And thanks for being like that one person who can show that one person can really make a difference. Oh my God. <laughs> thank you. And you, I've learned so much. I took tons of notes already today. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thanks.